Good morning, boys and girls. It's your old pal Adam back with another Fat to Chubby. So today I want to talk on, on a little um, more serious subject. It's it's that hitting that proverbial rock bottom, and it's something that unfortunately a lot of us, including myself, have to hit in order to to make the right changes to live a healthier life. But why? Why can't we be more proactive? Why can't we look in this ourselves in the mirror and say, "Damn, I'm getting fat. I need to make some changes." But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way for a lot of us. Um, so, just be real cognizant of that. I mean, one th one question that I always like to ask myself or other people is like, "What's it going to take? What's it going to take for you to start your journey?" And and if it's hitting rock bottom, that's a very dangerous, slippery slope. And, you know, the other day <clears throat> in, in one of my weight loss groups, someone posted a picture of uh, Dr. Dre, not uh, the NWA, Eminem, Dr. Dre, but Dr. Dre from uh, Yo! MTV Raps. He's always been a big guy. And, and this picture of him, which I'll, I'll put in the picture in picture here, you know, look at it. I mean, the guy lost his leg and the other leg is about to go. That's some scary, scary stuff right there. And what that really is, is untreated diabetes and someone that hit rock bottom and just kept on pushing. And they knew, in most cases, people know what they have to do to make changes. They just don't. They make excuses and, and they just dig that hole deeper and deeper. So, I mean, in some cases, it, it really is that, you know, that rock bottom, it's a heart attack. It's, you know, getting diabetes. It's organ failure. It's, it, it just really, it just comes in all forms. And that's just something that, that I don't want people to have to go through if you don't have to. So if you're somehow found this video and you're like, you know, that, that's, that's me. I, I definitely need help. Well, shoot me a message, comment, whatever. We can talk more about it, but definitely don't, don't wait anymore to, to get your physical, to start your journey, to do whatever you need to do, to change your life, to make yourself better and a better version of you. So, for my rock bottom, it, it was, you know, it, I mean, it was bad. I'm not going to lie about it. I mean, I've always been a short, stocky guy with no neck. I've always been, you know, a, a barrel of laughs, a, the life of the party, doing things in excess. But, you know, we all have these silent, silent struggles we're going through. Like for me, you know, uh, I, most of you um, know me personally. If not, you know, I I've re currently have, I have two kids, uh, Benjamin, who is about to turn four, and Charlotte who is Benjamin's sister, who I'll talk about in a minute. And then we have Faith, who is about to turn seven months. So my wife and I struggled to get pregnant, and we went through IVF, and we were expecting twins, and it was beautiful. We had, we had Benjamin and Charlotte, and, you know, everything was going great, and then it didn't. And we found out that, that Charlotte passed, and she was going to be stillborn. And it absolutely rocked my world. I put up a big front um, that didn't it didn't affect me as much as it did, but it did. I, I was I was struggling with everything uh, to really just keep keep my shit together. I mean, luckily we had Benjamin, and Benjamin was born healthy, and we got to meet Charlotte, and we got to understand that Charlotte was really there to help Benjamin come into this world. But after they were born, you know, we 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 had to deal with that, and and. My wife and I talked, you know, for hours and hours about it, but it's it goes beyond that. So for like the next two years, I kind of lived in this haze of denial, depression, fast food, alcohol, and and then all of a sudden I turned forty, and I started looking at myself in a different way, and and, and I started looking at Benjamin and, and looking at my past, and I'm like, I, I knew I needed to make changes, I knew I needed to get things better. So the first thing I did was go to a sleep, new sleep apnea doctor because my last one, I, I didn't care for their services anymore. Um, so I found this amazing doctor who had a completely different approach. Uh, shout out to uh, Dr. Faruqi at Razak and Associates. Um, but he had this really, just really, let's, let's get you fixed. Let's figure out what's wrong. Let's get you fixed approach. And that really kind of started opening my eyes. But what also opened up my eyes is when I stepped on the scale and I was 360 pounds. And I was like, holy shit. You know, it was the huge eye opener because I hadn't weighed myself in forever on purpose because I knew I knew what was going on, but I just never did it. And, 
you know, I started looking at myself in a different way. I, I was looking at the fact that I used to justify shopping at the big and tall store when I didn't need to, but I had to because it's the only way I could find clothes that fit me. Um, from there, so that was after I turned 40 in August, I, I went and saw him. So that was like August, September. And then in October, I got up to go to the bathroom from my office and I tore my meniscus. And I, and I, you know, I walked it off cause I'm a big, bad, tough guy. Um, and then we took a family trip to, to New Orleans and, and I used the, 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 um, the cruise control, which I never do. Um, and you know, finally my wife's like, just go to the damn doctor already. So I'm like, okay, fine. So I went to the doctor, got x-rays, got an MRI and, and my knee surgeon looks at me and says, Hey, good news is you tore your meniscus. You have one full tear and two partial tears. I'm like, how, how is that the good news? He's like, well, it is good news because the bad news is, is you're fat and half of your knee is bone on bone. And if you want to be a 41 year old with a brand new full knee replacement, you seriously need to change your ways today. I'm going to do the surgery for you, but after that, it's up to you to make those changes. And he suggested a really good non-surgical weight loss doctor um, which I was like, yeah, yeah, I don't need that. I'll do it on my own. So I had the surgery and part of my surgery was part of my rehab was doing uh, 30 minutes of cardio a day. And as everyone knows, I absolutely hate running unless, you know, I have to. So I hopped on the bike. <clears throat> so I was starting to do 30 minutes a day and I was struggling to get 30 minutes. I mean, I was, it was taking me 30 minutes to do, th you know, three, four, five, six miles. And obviously we all know where that's going to lead me from there, but so I started losing weight on my own. I started changing all those, all those dietary things. But then I started gaining weight. And I was like, what the hell is wrong with me? And then, you know, that's when I had that kind of self-realization period where it's like, holy shit, I am literally the walking sitcom dad that dies of a heart attack. I'm that guy. I'm that fun-loving dad everyone loves and everyone likes to be around. And then one day he gets killed off the show due to a heart attack. But that, that was 100% me. I was going down that path. So I just, I swallowed my pride and I, I called the doctor back and I'm like, all right, who's this weight loss doctor? And that's what brought me to Dr. Desai and, and Waywell MD and all that fun stuff. Um, so that's kind of my, my story. I mean, it's sad, it's depressing, but it's part of who I am and, and who my family is. And, and luckily I did something about it and I did something about it before it was too late. And really the whole this whole video is a PSA of me begging all of you today, right now, stop this video, call a doctor, call a weight loss specialist, whatever, get a physical, run every single test, especially now during the time of COVID, right? You know, everyone's <clears throat> has a friend or knows someone that just died of COVID randomly because they seem so healthy, but chances are they're like a skinny fat person. And, and that means, you know, they look healthy, they seem healthy. They might work out all the time, but they haven't had a physical in 10 years like I didn't. And chances are they have some underlying conditions. And that's why the physical is so important and all the blood work is so important. You know, check your, you know, get your EKG, get your heart health, get your A1C to make sure you're not pre-diabetic. And then once you get those results, make a plan and do something about it. And, you know, that's really the, the, the take home. Get a physical right now. You don't want to make, you want to make sure you don't have any underlying conditions, even if it's like a, a vitamin C or D deficiency, you can do something about it. But what you really want to do is, is, is have a plan, get fixed, get healthy and, and go from there. And I guess the one, the one sidebar is, is don't pay attention to BMI. BMI is a pile of shit. I know it's, it's a good indicator a lot of times for medical professionals to, to help start the treatment plan. So, you know, if you look at me, I'm five, 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 six on a good day. I'm 280 pounds. You know, people look at me straight up and they're like, they're like, oh, diabetic. And I'm like, take my vitals, right? According to BMI, I died like in 1997. But according to my blood work and my physical, I'm in medically healthy shape. So take that for what it's worth. Um, that's all I got. Um, please like, share, subscribe. Um, that's all I got. Love you all. Have a great day. Fat to Chubby out.